All right, folks, welcome to another fantastic episode. It is early, early on Grenada. Me and Marcus just got out here. We are getting in at the Bryant boat ramp, and uh, it's a perfect day, another perfect day. It's going to be a steam bath, very little wind. We're about to go back to that same spot we were at earlier this week, and uh, we're putting a limit in the boat today. That's the goal, a limit in the boat. I don't want to jinx it or nothing like that, but still, Ready for the limit of slabs. Limit of slabs. We're going to see what kind of weight we can get for seven fish. This is our last full day here on Grenada. And uh, boy, we've had a ball. Good time. Appreciate you joining. Please subscribe. Bam, let's do Hey folks, thanks for joining me. Do me a favor and subscribe. That really helps me out. This is our last day on Grenada and this is the day we put the biggest slabs in the boat, without a doubt. But we're gonna do something a little different as well. So you're gonna get to see those big slabs, but we're gonna be talking about spidering. We're gonna be talking about equipment, teamwork, tactics. That's gonna be the topic. And let me tell you, it's gonna be pretty cool. You're gonna see some big slabs, but a lot of voiceover explaining what we're doing out there on the water. So let's start off with equipment. This is number one, folks. This talk, this takes a lot of money to do. I'm not gonna uh, sugarcoat it because there's a lot of equipment involved with spider rigging if you plan on doing it. Now let's start off with the poles. Poles can be in lengths of 16, 14, or 12. And heck, you could even spider rig with a, a seven or eight footer. It really doesn't matter. It always depends on the depth in which you are fishing is how far you wanna be away from the boat. So most people believe further away the better now the further away you get the more of an issue it becomes with managing that pole so just remember that so if you get three four per person out there the longer they are the more difficult they are to manage so poles are important I think the 14 footer is the most versatile and easy one to manage um, if you're just getting started a lot of tournament anglers are always going to be using maybe the 16s even go up to 18s uh, in terms of length the next topic, just some small things, rod holders. When you transport your rods on your boat, you're gonna need something to, to transport these rods. Um, I choose the Cornfield Crappie Gear. You can see them down there. They support the rods on the side of the boat anytime we're moving on and off the lake to our, our uh, accommodations. The next big expenditure though is going to be rigging system. So you're gonna choose whether you want a T-bar or individual rod holders. I go with the uh, Drift Masters, they work great. I use individual, it's called the Crappie Stalker. I truly do believe that every pole should have its own individual um, rigging system. That way, anything you do with another pole does not affect your pole, so I truly believe it. Now, the cheaper alternative is without a doubt, the T-Bar. And this too can catch a ton of fish, it doesn't matter. So I see a lot of people out there with T-Bars, but I just choose to do the individual. Another good topic will be the net that you use. Now, I believe in a 12-foot net, and I think Jinko Fishing has an incredible net, the Big T, I don't know, lightweight, 12-footer. This thing is awesome. You can maneuver it around with one hand. Now, I will tell you, it is fragile. It's not something that I net a catfish with, a big bass with, or anything else, but I can tell you it scoops up big crappie easy, and it's light, which is very nice. The last topic I'm going to talk about in terms of equipment is going to be power poles, drift socks, chains. You have to do something that manages your speed on these lakes when you have some wind. So, you need to decide which direction you want to go with. Power poles, extremely expensive, but makes it extremely convenient to slow up your boat in a, any type of wind. Drift socks are probably the most affordable way. You could probably get away with maybe a $60, $70 drift socks. But of course, the big honking chain, my partner Wade bought a chain in, in Memphis, and this thing was massive, and we drug that thing around Lake Washington. So. There's a lot of different things. People can you know, drag sinks, they can drag whatever they want to slow the boat up, but uh, you need something to be able to manage your speed on any day that has wind. Because you, know, you never know if you wanna move at 0.4 or if you wanna move at 1.2. So, very important.
All right, so the next topic is going to be teamwork. And I think this is very important because when you're spider rigging, let me tell you, it is a lot of stuff going on. You might get a tangle on one side of the boat and, and, uh, and while your guy is, is netting another fish. Um, so teamwork, teamwork. We have, when we go out and spider rig, we actually have tasks. When we're setting up or we're tearing down, we definitely know what we're going to be doing each person. So we're not walking around boat, bumping into each other, that type of thing. Somebody's getting the rods off the rod holder. Somebody's placing them in the, in the crappie stalkers. Somebody's, you know, we have certain tasks. And you learn those tasks by being out on the boat with each other several times. That's how that comes about. It's not something you write down on a piece of paper. It's just like everybody knows their, their, their job setting up and tearing down to make it more efficient. Another part about, you know, another part about teamwork is definitely the focus it requires to continue looking on your rod tips. Before I continue, I want to show you what's going on here on the screen. This is a gentleman that actually loaned us some minnows in the middle of the day. We ran out of minnows because of the heat. Our minnows continued to die and these minnows are large on, on Grenada Lake. So Kudos to that gentleman. He gave us minnows uh, at that point, and actually, when he quit, he came back over and gave us the balance of his minnows. But uh, back to teamwork. Uh, focus is huge. Uh, you're, you know, you're sight fishing, so you can get distracted. So it's very difficult. You have to continue to focus on the rod tips. Also, if somebody else is catching a fish, you have to drop whatever you're doing to get that net and put it in the water to catch, get that fish. Um, very important that that's the priority on the boat is getting those fish in the boat. Um, another thing I'd like to always bring up is that if your partner's not fishing, there's a good chance you're not fishing. So if he's struggling with a hook, a tangle, uh, getting a, a hook out of a fish's mouth, anything of that nature, it's very important that you help your partner out because at the end of the day, it's teamwork. You're, you're both fishing and working together. And if he's struggling over there, don't sit back and eat a cheeseburger while he's, you know, can't fish for a long time. Because ultimately, if he's not fishing, usually that means you're not fishing. You want somebody to be able to net your fish, etc. Very important. All right, so our last topic is going to be tactics. And let me tell you, it's real simple. We have to decide our speed and our bait depths and the bait types. On Grenada Lake, it was moving at 0.5. It was 12 foot down. That's what it was all weekend. You can establish this within the first probably two hours of fishing anywhere. You're just going to see where your baits are. You're going to st stagger how deep you are fishing and the bait uh, types. So whether it's a plastic or a minnow. We were fishing with double rig setups with minnows. That was it. We never really messed around with too many jigs. Um, the minnows seemed to be working, so we weren't going to mess with that. So that's your tactics. So let's clean some fish. Um, and I really do, guys, appreciate it. It's kind of a different episode, but uh, yeah, let's clean some fish. All right, we just got back. We did our weigh-in, and we're drinking our favorite beer. That's Natty Light. So we had an incredible day. Caught roughly around 25 our our seven fish was 1256 so 12 pounds 12.5 and uh here they are so big ones are in the bottom and uh yeah let's clean these bad boys so i appreciate you guys staying with us hey let's. huh let's no that's right i told him he buys the beer <laughs> I'll, I'll clean the fish no big deal i enjoy cleaning big fish actually hey don't forget about big oaks lodge these guys are awesome. Seriously, our bet, our favorite family to enjoy our, our trips to Grenada with. They're just great people. Big Oaks Lodge. Check them out. Incredible accommodations. You back, you back your boat up, and there's actually space for two of them. There's probably space for as many boats as you want. Um, but plug it in. Right to there. You have a nightlight. You have a nightlight. All that great stuff. So... There it is. All right, these are the big dogs. So we didn't show you during the other photos, but check these guys. These are all roughly two pounders. Some more, some less. Here are the other two. These are our biggest fish of the day. And they were, it was incredible. So, you know, we're talking about middle of the summer, late summer fishing here. And these fish are not necessarily bulking yet, up yet. When they bulk up in the fall, these guys are going to get even bigger. But during the spawn, these guys are two and a half. Probably, I mean, I'm just kind of guessing at that. Two and a half, 275. I mean, these are big dogs. So when I fillet, I, I use the Rapella. I haven't been very excited about quality-wise. I have about three of these right now. And two of them are kind of 
haywire inside the house. This one seems to be working okay, but uh, I might try some of the other uh, options out there for as a cutter. But this is how I do it. I, I, I cut right there behind this fin right here, and then I kind of follow the spine back. This is a big fish, so it's going to be a little bit. So I flip it over, and then I take that, that slab off the off the fish right here. So this is what you end up with right here. Now, what you know, the, the fishing, the fish cleaning station that I have out at the lake, is this thing's raised. This needs to be raised about an inch. Um, that allows you to make that cut right here above, and it's just way easier. So this is what you end up with right here with the rib cages in. Then I just go ahead and I just and I just kind of dissect that out. And you know, that's that's your slab right there. We're gonna see if we can do a little bit better. There you go. Three more hogs to do. Marcus is inside doing the detail work on the on the fillets. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say you can get more meat off if you use a fillet knife. I get it, but as many fish as I fillet, this is way more effective and quicker. Some people are gonna say that's even as quick with a fillet knife. I get it, um, but this is what I this is what I've grown up using and feel very comfortable with it. Yeah, I need one. Well, at the end of the day, the guys' weekend was awesome. Great time, camaraderie, caught a lot of big fish. I love Grenada. We're going back to Grenada in the uh, middle of October. We're going back to Grenada for some definitely a lot of tournaments. Um, love the lake. Definitely worth the, uh, the travel time and everything else. But ultimately, it's about, you know, enjoying time with the other guys and catching just a ton of fish. So thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Please, please subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Take it easy.